Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Paul Wright. I teach at Cabrini University near Philadelphia, and I'm proud to be an affiliated faculty member with the Bren Mawr Film Institute. On behalf of BMFI, uh, I welcome you to this very brief introduction to the 1976 classic film Network, directed by Sidney Lumet and written by Patty Chayefsky, an amazing and, and true classic. And I'm also excited that BMFI is hosting an online discussion of Network on Monday, August 9th, that will be led by myself and also Dr. Andrew Douglas, the Director of Film Education at BMFI. Um, what an amazing movie it is. One of the best films of the 1970s, which is arguably the greatest era of American filmmaking. Many would say that. Not all would agree, but many will uh, agree. Um, it is also, I would say, just one of the best films ever made. Um, Network, for me, um, really captures all the potential of great cinema at its finest. I love it as a brilliant satire. I think it's incredibly biting and funny. I love it as a piece of, of agitprop, of social commentary, social critique. Uh, and in many ways, this film has turned out to be very prescient, uh, prophetic, in terms of anticipating the media environment in which we now all live, uh, long after Chayefsky and Lumet have gone. Um, so I want to frame uh, the, the genesis of Network and its importance, its legacy to you uh, in anticipation of our discussion. I want to frame that for you in a few ways. First of all, let's just think about Sidney Lumet, the director, and Patty Chayefsky, the screenwriter. Both of them got their start in television. Both of them owe a great deal to the television industry uh, that allowed them to eventually launch into full-on uh, Hollywood careers. Um, in a certain sense, uh, people in the television world, when Network came out, thought that Lumet and Chayefsky were biting the hands that fed them, right? They had been um, given their start, given their opportunity in television, and some saw it as a betrayal of their own, um, you know, artistic resume uh, to go at television in the way they do in this film. But I think that's a mischaracterization, because fundamentally, both Lumet and Chayefsky actually loved the potential of television. And I really want to stress that because someone who watches Network even one time is going to walk away thinking the person who wrote this must hate television to its core um, and, and is a snob who can't embrace uh, the artistic potential of the medium. That's not true at all. Um, for a fact, Sidney Lumet and Chayefsky had both come up in the 1950s golden age of television, its first true golden age, and they had done a lot of work with adapting uh, theatrical plays to the small screen of television. So Lumet in Playhouse 90 and Chayefsky and a host of other uh, venues on television, they put a lot of effort into believing in the pot potential artistic power of television as a medium. Uh, in fact, Chayefsky writes Marty and it originally gets um, uh, shown on the small screen, right, with a different cast eventually becomes a Hollywood film that gets Chayefsky his first Oscar. Um, but the story really is born on the small screen of television. So both Lumet and Chayefsky knew what television could be at its best. They believed in that. But by the 1970s, both of them uh, started to see television betraying its artistic potential, um, betraying its obligation to uh, inform and inspire and entertain uh, the American public. They thought television had lost its way. And so this wasn't a hatred for the medium itself. It was calling the medium to task for not being what it ought to be. And Chayefsky, of course, includes in this critique uh, the fate of news divisions uh, throughout television during that time and certainly even into our own time. Uh, what was happening, right? News divisions went from being uh, the purview of people like Edward R. Murrow and Walter Cronkite, Ron Walter Cronkite to being um, uh, asked to be profitable, right? So these news divisions that had been once insulated uh, from all the kind of corporate maneuverings and profit motives of the companies that owned these news divisions, now those news divisions were being pushed into that arena and being asked to be uh, profitable, namely by being more entertaining and a little more loose and increasingly more loose with the facts. And this bothered uh, Chayefsky to no end as well. It wasn't just that television wasn't as creative and artistic as, as it had once been in the 50s. He also felt like even the news division, the last bastion of truth-telling, 
uh, even that was being um, co-opted and compromised by a corporate interest. Um, to give you a sense of, of Chayefsky's uh, rage, because I think rage really defines him as a writer, um, irascibility would be another word. I'm going to read you a passage from a great book on the making of network I recommend. It's called Mad as Hell, The Making of Network, and the fateful vision of the angriest man in movies. So there you have Peter Finch as Howard Beale. Uh, Finch wins the Academy Award posthumously for this role. Great book by Dave Itzkoff. And at the very beginning of the book, uh, Itzkoff tries to capture Chayefsky's anger. Uh, he says he was at his best when he was angry. It wasn't simply that so many things bothered him or that when they did, they irritated him to the fullest possible degree. But where others avoided conflict, he cultivated and embraced it. His fury nourished him, making him intense and unpredictable, but also keeping him focused and productive. He was not generally the sort of person who felt the need to clench his fists in violence or submerge his sorrows in drink, but he knew what it was like to have desires and see them denied. He knew how it felt to cry out and not be heard. His outrage simmered in his spleen and surged through his veins, collecting in his fingertips until it pushed his pen across paper and punched the keys of his typewriter. He wrestled his rancor into words and sentences and speeches. When Paddy Chayefsky's character spoke, they spoke with his aggravated, articulate voice, and yet they seemed to speak for everyone. I think that's a really beautiful way of capturing not just the, the anger and the, the edge of social critique in Chayefsky, but the way in which he could translate that to his characters and his scenarios. And in this way, you can see Howard Beale, uh, played by Peter Finch, as the emanation of Chayefsky's uh, overall anger. Anger at not just his circumstances in life or his career situation, etc., or not even anger only at uh, the, the devolution of television. It's an anger at everything in the social order at large. There's a way in which Chayefsky sees the world uh, post-World War II as merely uh, making its way, slouching its way towards yet another cataclysm. Um, he was very uh, concerned as a Jewish person uh, about anti-Semitism in the world, the uh, legacy of the Holocaust, and the ongoing danger to Jewish people um, going, going forward from the war. Um, so this sense of the world in peril, this sense not only of Jewish people in peril, but everyone in peril, and the way in which that was being fueled by an increasing rejection of reality and an increasing rejection of truth-telling. Um, these were things that, that really um, stayed in the spleen, to use Itzkoff's word, uh, of Chayefsky. Uh, one more passage from this book um, that I want to share with you. It gets at uh, why Chayefsky was mad at television. Um, the problems, plural, with television, as enumerated by Patty Chayefsky, included but were not limited to its crassness, its stupidity, its chasing of fads, and its embracing of gimmicks, its reduction of all that was distinctive and worthy of celebration in American culture to the basic food groups of game shows, songs, and dances, its compulsion to force everyone watching it to think the same thing at the same time, and its overall lack of artistic integrity. Also, it paid him too little. Um, and yes, the sense of being undervalued, underpaid by television uh, certainly was one of many things that, that annoyed uh, Chayefsky about the medium. But above all, the things that come before in that list, right? The way in which uh, crassness, uh, entertaining according to the lowest common denominator, warping or abandoning truth altogether uh, simply for the profit motive, all these things that uh, Chayefsky enumerates about television Think about them. We could say all those things about the media environment in which we live today. And not just the American media environment, right? The global media environment. Uh, the social media environment in particular. Chayefsky didn't live to see any of the technologies and things that we have today. Um, and yet he was um, talking about them, it seems. Talking to us quite directly. In fact, when Network uh, originally came out in 1976, it certainly was lauded by critics. It certainly got a lot of Oscar uh, love, um, not just nominations, but wins. Not only did Chayefsky win an Oscar for screenwriting, but three of the six main performers in this movie that I'm about to name, they too won Oscars. So you have William Holden, Peter Finch, 
Faye Dunaway, Beatrice Strait, uh, Ned Beatty, uh, and who else is on my list here? Robert Duvall, of course. Um, any of those could easily win an Oscar for just about anything they do. Three of them won the Oscar uh, for, for Network. Beatrice Strait in a small supporting role, Faye Dunaway in a main role, uh, and Peter Finch, of course, winning. And the rest of the cast getting nominated, too. So um, it, it's really quite extraordinary uh, how uh, beloved this film was when it first came out. But all that said, there were uh, naysayers. There were um, critics of the film who felt it was too bombastic, too much agitprop, too much, um, um, you know, mad, angry man routine, right? The Howard Beale routine. Um, and one of the critiques that people had at the time was that it was too unbelievable, that it posited a world of television gone awry, run amok, uh, that was so destructive and so fantastically farcical that it couldn't be believed, right? That the things depicted in this movie um, simply um, went too far and, and lost all credibility, right? That instead of making this satire that takes all these liberties with, you know, how bad TV can be. Chayefsky would have been better served reining in his rage and, and doing something a little more measured. Um, I think over time, uh, the people who criticize the film for going too far have been proven wrong, right? Because so many of the things in this movie that seemed, even in 1976, very outlandish, you know, no, it would never get that bad. People would never do that just for the bottom line, just for a dollar. Um, people would never lose that much sight of basic decency, morality, and the truth. Um, all these things that people said, you know, as a critique of the film then, um, sadly, <laughs> many of the things depicted in the film have happened, right? We're living in a time now more than ever where it seems people's relationship to the truth is tenuous at best. Um, I'm often reminded in reading, uh, in re revisiting Network, uh, of a book I, I love and I use with students. It's a very short book of philosophy by Harry Frankfurt, um, a philosopher uh, at Princeton once upon a time. Uh, and the book that Frankfurt wrote that still is used today and gets all this attention, it's super short. You can find it online. It's called Bullshit, On Bullshit. Um, and so it's a playfully titled, playful, philosophical text. It's not long at all. It's very easy to read. But there's a lot of depth to it, actually. And one of the things Harry Frankfurt says is, look, liars are dangerous. They're, they're bad people. We have to watch out for them. Um, but one thing you can say, liars um, do have some sense of what the truth is. They have to have a sense of the truth in order to distort it or in order to, to betray it. Um, so at least they have a tenuous relationship to the truth that they are not honoring, right? But a bullshitter is far worse, according to Harry Frankfurt because a bullshitter has no interest in the truth whatsoever. A bullshitter has no relationship to it, doesn't care what the truth may or may not be. The bullshitter is simply going to say whatever is most self-serving without any reference to factuality. Um, so if you think of the way in which our social media landscape now encourages that kind of bullshitting, right, what Harry Frankfurt's talking about, you, I think, get a sense of what also Pat Chayefsky was talking about, right? Is a landscape, a media landscape, where um, people no longer are just truth tellers or liars, they are bullshitters. And they are willing to, um, you know, frame the world in any way that is necessary to get more ratings, to get more money, to get more advertising dollars. And it's kind of the if it bleeds, it leads mentality, right? The more outra outrageous, the more disturbing, the more sensationalistic uh, the entertainment or the news story or whatever it is on television, right? The better for the bottom line. And it's that world of, of crass bullshitting <laughs> that both Harry Frankfurt and, and Patty Chayefsky were very bothered by. And in that sense, um, this is a movie of our moment. And I think this movie has only grown in stature over the years because it no longer um, feels like some kind of satiric exaggeration. It feels like a documentary in certain ways, um, which is sad for the world at large, but at least wonderful for the world of cultural achievement, right? Because that is certainly what this amazing film is. And I look forward to talking to you all about it. Take care.